Today I'm going to talk about creating taper in trees. You must be wondering what this strange image is. But this image is of a massive trident maple that I've developed over the years. This is the tree in the foreground. And the other tracery of branches belong to two oak trees that are in our car park. I'm showing it to you because in the winter when the trees are devoid of their leaves, the tracery of the branches are absolutely exquisite and that's what we admire in deciduous trees. With bonsai, although we are admiring the structure of the tree and the tree is miniaturized in form, the trees are obviously in proportion uh, to the canopy that they have. This massive trident, for instance, let's look at it now in detail, has a big trunk and then it tapers to a fine point. With ordinary trees, if we look at that big oak tree, that big oak tree is about, I would say, 120 feet tall. It's a huge tree and it's about 200 years old. The tree has a trunk diameter of about five feet, but in proportion to the height, the trunk is pretty insignificant but yet this tree has never been chopped so you can see how from the broad trunk it tapers to finer and finer points if you look at any of the trees in nature you will find that happening see from a thick base they taper to a point if i now move on to another very beautiful tree that i have let's come and have a look at this one this tree here is a Japanese maple, Asa palmatum, Japanese mountain maple. It's a very beautiful specimen tree. And this tree, I think, was imported from Japan maybe about 20 years ago. And I've developed the twiggery over many years, so I've improved it quite considerably. I want to show you this tree mainly because I want to explain to you how the taper was created. And because it's an imported tree, the Japanese have used all their uh, technique to create that taper. So it starts at the base with very good nebari coming up, coming up. And then you can see how it tapers to a point. Now, how is this made? You will all know that bonsai is created by chopping a big tree and growing the branches again. I will show you this oak tree that we have made. It's quite a big one. This has been grown in an oak style. And this was made only like three or four years ago. But I'm not creating taper on this. I just chopped it to create more branches. So this is not a good example of taper. This is a Benichidori where we are creating taper. But the taper is not perfect yet. But let's get back to this beautiful tree and you can see that the taper is all the way up to the trunk and it seems that it has never been cut at any point in its life or so you think but I don't think that is the case if I turn the tree around on the turntable I will show you how it was possibly made if we look at the tree there coming up there it must have been cut at some point over here and then maybe here and then a very severe cut was made there. You can see that it's still healing. The callus is taking place there and it goes all the way up the tree. So that is how we create the taper. I wanted to show you that tree because it's got very good ramification. Now let's look at this tree. This is a chicken plucker tree, if you remember. Last spring I was plucking all the leaves. This is two trees joined together. But you can see again the taper. This is our one of our field grown trees. This is what we do. The first cut was made over here. You can still see the callusing. Another cut made over there. And then they are subsequently cut, cut, cut to keep adding taper. So the taper is created by constant cutting so that it tapers to a point. If we come to this great big trident maple, this trident maple was imported from Japan in 1990 as a stump about a third of its thickness. This tree has a two foot diameter trunk. 
if you can see the size of that trunk it is absolutely massive and it has been de developed over the last 29 years and all the branches have been created here so it came here chopped at this point it was chopped and there was nothing there so all the rest has been added in the last 29 or 30 years and you can see where the chops have been made there must have been a very major chop made over here a thick branch or something was taken out and then keep chopping keep chopping if you keep going up the tree you can see where the chops are made and these are the recent cuts or chops one cut was made there another cut was made up there and you can see how it's callousing and then another chop made at the back there and then it keeps going on and on and on so this is how taper is made you keep chopping the trunk pull a new leader up and as the leader grows let it thicken and then the taper is created and you don't let it grow too tall but you chop it back and you get the ramification you can look at some of the other trees this is another tried maple that I have been creating over the last 29 or 30 years got beautiful base first chop was made there and then the major chop made over here another chop made there and this is the latest leader that I've been creating for the last 10 years and this is how it is made and you can see the big chops at the back the trick is to hide and camouflage the chops I'm cutting it so that it rots away you can see how the wood is rotting away and as it rots it'll callous and then you won't be able to see the chop so the trick is to hide the chops that you've made and this in effect is how the taper is created it's a very long process so deciduous trees are really very difficult to make unlike the conifers like the junipers and the pines you just put a few wires on the branches pull a leader up and you've got a good tree but it's very hard to get taper now this is another example you see how the big chops are made over there and then you pull a new shoot up to create the new leader this is an arakawa this is a major major arakawa it's about nearly three and a half feet tall and you can see this is a garden tree that i made it from major chop was made over here still healing and callousing and then a branch was pulled up over here and that is how the taper is made so if using this as the front you won't be able to discern where the cut was made so if we proceed and look at all the other deciduous trees that we have here we have literally hundreds of these trees it's a very long-term process this trident again with a beautiful thick trunk i dare say the first cut was made over here and then another cut made over there and so on it goes on and on and of course with this as the front you can't see where it is cut and this if you go to the back you can still see where the thick trunks were cut and it's callousing over you see that's the cut paste to make it callous and then another cut made there callousing and so the taper is added all the time this is a slow tedious process but it is absolutely necessary to make the taper this is a big deshojo huge deshojo that i used to display at wisley and from that thick trunk several cuts were made and then this branch was pulled up as the new leader and that's how you get the taper if we look at all these trees all these trees are examples of how taper is made this is another massive massive field maple the trunk is every bit 12 or 15 inch or maybe more in diameter at the base when you think that those panels are three or four foot wide this tree is more than four foot wide I would say four foot six or five foot wide and the cuts are made successive cuts that is a very major cut over there 
then cut there, cut there, and we keep adding the taper. So you can see how the taper goes all the way up the tree. If I didn't want to take it so far, I can probably cut that back portion off and let this grow as a new taper. So the taper is constantly added by pulling the shoots up and creating the taper. With evergreen trees, it's not so uh, noticeable. So if we look at these cedar trees, it's going up to a point and the same principle is used. You can see there's a cut made over here and that becomes the new crown. But the taper is best seen when these deciduous trees have no leaves on them. Another fat trident with a massive trunk going up the trunk. That's where the cuts are made. New leaders pulled up, new shoots pulled up. And you can see how the taper gradually goes to the top. Another example of a massive, massive mountain maple. The taper is not so good on this one because it's a bit abrupt, but that is where the major cut was made. You can still see the cut paste that remains on the tree. It's calloused over, this massive cut about five or six inches in diameter, and that's where it's callousing. And you can see where the cuts are made. There's another cut made over there, another cut made there. And that's how the taper is continued throughout the tree. I will now move on to some other lesser examples. These are all very mature trees that I've been working on for the last 20 or 30 years. Let's look at some which have not had so much time worked into the tree. I'm now here in my Satsuki Azalea area. This is a very major tall Satsuki. It's about every bit four feet tall and it has very good taper. So you can see the massive base, beautiful base of what we call Nebari, the Japanese call it Nebari, and then tapering to a point. So all along the way, they would have cut it. The first cut would have been made there, then other cuts made there, 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 and so on. So they keep adding and pulling up new shoots and it tapers to a point. If you look at all these trees, you can see how it is done, tapering to a point. Just to show you another variety of tree, this is a conker tree or horse chestnut. And the horse chestnut, the botanical name, I happen to have a label here because this was a tree that was shown at our collection at Wisley, Aeschylus hippocastanum. And you can see this was created from a field grown tree. It was bolt upright about six to eight feet tall. The base is about four inches across. Major cut was made there. So that has been grown there. Then another cut made over here. Another leader taken up. It was cut there. And then it keeps twisting and turning where I cut it. So you can change not just the shape of the tree, but you can create taper simply by doing this. Now, just next to it, I have a very good example of a beech tree that I'm creating. It's a tall beech, and you can see where the cuts are made. The cuts are made there. And this is a young shoot that I'm growing up. This is going to be the future leader. That shoot will pull the sap up, and I'm going to get a good taper from that. So once that thickens, once this thickens, that will form the new leader for the tree. So many of these trees we make on the nursery, we create, as I said to you in some of my other videos, we produce half the trees that we sell on our own land. So these trees have taken long, mostly about 30 years in the making. So this tree where that big cut is, we pulled another tree away from it. So hence the uh, callousing that you see. But the major cut was made over there. So that I've allowed to let rot and then a new shoot was pulled up here and then allowed to grow and then another cut made over there and so on. So we keep pulling the sap up and that's how the taper is created.
This tree here is an English elm that I dug from our hedge. Again, the trunk base is every bit 12 or more inches. If you measure the roots, it's at least two feet. The trunk diameter is about six to eight inches. And I made it from simply cutting the leading shoot and creating the taper that way. This big hole here, this was the first cut. It was cut and then allowed to grow up to here. Then all these are subsequent cuts. You can see how they've been cut. Another major cut made here. And then the shoots are pulled up. And this is the final height of the tree. So you can see how the cuts have been made and tapering to a point. The longer you leave it to grow, the better the taper will merge with the rest of the tree. The best examples of taper are really seen in the deciduous trees and the trident maples are very, very good examples. This trident is, I would say, about 70, 80 centimeter tall and you can see how the development of the taper is carried out. These we used to buy as bare stumps with no branches, so all the branches have been created here. So I would say that this tree was cut over there for the first time, the first cut and then may be allowed to grow and then the next major cut was made there and then the taper is taken to the top. So the taper is still being developed. Most people would give their right arm for that tree, but you can still see that the taper is in the process of being made. This is another tried maple and you can see how it's tapering to a point and you can clearly see how they have been made. I have in front of me, these are two Dawn Redwood uh, plants and the Dawn Redwood is the Metasequoia Glyptostroboides. So this tree, we are producing the taper, the branches are wired you can see where the cut was made over there and then the new branch was pulled up there to create the taper this was only cut last year you see the cut paste is still visible and the callousing is taking place but that new branch has thickened up so gradually it will form a nice taper and you won't be able to see it uh, in due course there's a double branch there we'll take one of them out and probably only keep one as the leader same with this one. This is the other swamp, uh, not swamp cypress, dawn redwood. And the cut, you can see where the cut was made. This was only made in about April or May of last year. And already this new shoot or the new branch has thickened up. And we will soon get a very nice taper. And you won't be able to see where the cut was made. And the trick is to disguise it so that you don't see the cut. I thought that while I'm passing by, this is the tree that I made by using the car pressure washer. You remember I pressure washered the roots and created this very intricate root system, washing all the soil off. I'm going to show you how the taper is being made on this tree. So this was the first cut over there that will heal over. Another cut was made there. And then another cut made there. I can't actually show you the cutting because if I just make a cut, I have to wait a couple of years before I show you the next cut. So it's really just to show you where the cuts were made over a long period of time. So first cut there, next cut there, next cut there, and it goes to the top. And I can then decide what to do with it. Either I cut it there again and let that one go and so on and gradually you will see that the tree will taper to a nice point but this is where it takes time i was just passing by and the last couple of months a number of you have asked about silver birch bonsai so while i'm here i'm going to show you this silver birch that i've been making over a long period of time and it is already silvering in the trunk 
Silver birch are not easy to use for bonsai because the branches are very brittle and they don't uh, last very long and they tend to snap and hard to make ramification. So this is quite a large specimen, fairly successful, but as a rule, I don't like using silver birch. But I'm showing this to you because you can see where there's a big cut made there, another cut made there. That was allowed to grow, big cut made there. And these new shoots are pulled up. Although I don't want a single lead on this, it will taper to a gradual point in time. So wherever you cut, you can create the taper and get it to a fine point. I'm now going to show you some other nice mountain maples. This is a mountain maple, maple with very beautiful movement. And you can see, just taking the picture from the base to the top, you can see gradually the tape, tapering process. And you can work out for yourself where the cuts have been made. That's the obvious cut there. And the leader is going to end up somewhere there. If I turn behind me, this is an example of a Korean hornbeam. And again, the cuts have been made to create the taper. This is where a major cut was made over there. Other cuts made there and so on. Just by panning the camera all the way up the trunk, you can soon figure out where the cuts were made to create the taper. We have a lot of these Korean horn beams. That's another one going all the way to the top and you can see how the tapers gradually pulled up the tree. And last but not least, before I move on to some of the trees in the field, this is the famous split trunk maple that I owned for several years and now belongs to one of my best customers. And it shows how the taper is made in a rather unconventional way because although it is a single tree, there are many, many branches and trunks on it. So the main trunk is there. It was split with an axe at that point, but these major branches have grown and you can see how the taper has been added and added to the top of the tree, tapering to a point. I'm going to repot this tree in a couple of months time near the, nearer the spring and you'll see this tree in all its glory. This is Peter Chan's signature tree, but it comes back to the nursery every year for care and maintenance. I'm now in the back greenhouse and I just remember that this great big hornbeam that I did during the summer, I can show you where we did the cuts. If I can just ask Steve to hold the camera. The first cut was made over here. So that was a great big lump taken out. And then if we come around the back, I left the tree developed that much, about six or eight inches. Then another big cut was made there. Then I allowed some more to grow. And then some cuts were made here. And then it was grown again and the cut was made there. You can see progressively how the cuts have been made. This is cut there and this is the new leader which is being pulled up. So I should stop it at some point. I can cut it there and then develop the ramification from there on. So this is a very good example of how the uh, tapering is made. If I now move on to some simple plants, just to show you the simple principles of doing the taper. This is a paper bark maple and uh, you see I made a cut here and made the tree turn so it was just creating taper and movement. Another cut was made there and I made the tree turn and then I cut another piece there and this has come here so if I don't want the tree to grow any taller, I can probably cut it either here or there. And meanwhile, the tree is already looking quite nice. If I just let it develop thickness, and that is going to be the bonsai. 
I will now show you another example. This is a European hornbeam that we grow in the field. And this tree, I would say, would be about 15 years old. When we planted it in the ground, they were only about this thin when they were like two, three years old. So this has developed for the last four or five years in this pot. So it's quite root, uh, root bound. So I will show you where the first cut was made. First cut was made there and the tree turned, moved there. And the second cut was made there. You can see where that rotten wood is. And one new leader popped up from here up to there. Then I cut it there and you got this piece. And depending on which I decide to use as the front, I can use this as the front. I can either make this the new leader there, or if I wanted to, I could even make this the leader and make it twist and turn that way. Uh, so this is how the taper is created. So if I didn't want to pull it too high, I can even use this as the taper. Cut it there like that. I will do it just to prove the point. See, I'll pull that up and that'll be the taper. So gradually tapering to a point. Just to reinforce the principle, let me show you what I do on a maple. This is a Japanese maple. And here you are. Quite an old tree. This is the first cut, major cut there. So it's been cut and then a new shoot was pulled up. So you can see the taper. I can taper it even more. I don't bother doing the refining at this stage. I just pull the new shoot up to create the leader. And when the leader is growing strongly, I then cut it back to refine it. So you can see what's happening there. I'll just get rid of this to show you. And you can see how it is moving away. The taper, see, this thick part is merging into that. If I didn't want the tree to grow tall, I can cut it over there and create better taper there. But since it's got so much nice ramification, I'm going to probably stop it there. So this just shows you the principle of creating the taper. So there's some patience involved, but the general principle is to take a new shoot up and keep training it up. And at some point you cut it and then you'll get the blending of the thick trunk into the new branch or the new leader. So I hope you've learned something from that. I just noticed that this is an oak that the squirrels have put into the ground. Again, if I didn't want this to get too thick, I can cut it there and create taper from there. Cut the tap root. This may not look anything, but this is how the mighty oaks are created from the lakehorns. So with that, I will move on to the next stage of the tapering process, which I will show you from the field and continue enjoying the videos. So you've seen some of these when I took you for a walk around the nursery. These are trident maples and the trident maples, I take great care in producing the taper. So you can see progressively where the cuts are made. Like this one, for instance, if you look at this tree from here, you see how it twists and turns and the cut, the first cut made then another cut made there, another cut made there and so on. And this is the new leader which is pulled up and although, although it's been cut there, I will probably cut it back to there to create the taper. So I won't let it grow too tall. So that is an example of that one. So wherever we look, let's look at, say, just pick at random any tree. Look at this tree as well. This is a very good example of beautiful taper. Look at that, almost like a pyramid, broad at the base. These are all the branches that help to make it thick. A thick side branch was taken out from there. Then the first major cut was made there. If you can see, it's still showing the scar, but we don't see it because that's going to be the back. And then another cut was made there. And then another cut made there. This cut was made only like two years ago. It's already callousing. And then another cut there. So constant cutting, cutting all the time to progressively get to the tapering point. And if we look at all those trees, you can see how they've been gradually cut. Even this one, this again is a major tree. This tree is, if we just look at the base there, it's every bit two foot in diameter. Look at it from this side, look at it. 
beautiful place there. This is the front of the tree. These are the branches that help to make it thick. So the first cut would have been made there. Another cut made there. So progressively I'm cutting and I'm still creating taper. So this was a lump that we got rid of. So that's going to be the new taper for next year. So that's how we've created that one. So let's go on to show you some more examples. Even these very humble trees here. These are all fairly young trees. These are just hornbeams. And look at it. Major cut was made there. So this was a branch. So it was allowed to grow only about two inches. And I cut it off there. And then another branch. This was all produced last year. About three, four feet was produced last year. I'm going to cut it next year over here. And that's how I would create the taper on that one. And again, if you look at most of these trees, this is a very good example of how the taper is being made. If I can just yank it out of the ground to show you. This was a cut made only last year. It's rotted away and you can see already blended with the trunk. This was last year's growth, it's still green. And this is blended with that and this is grown up that way. If I didn't want the tree to grow too tall, I'll cut it here and then I'll get a better taper. So, this is how we take the bees And everywhere you look, you will see that the taper is constantly being created. I will just show you some other examples. Now, this is a Siberian elm that I have been making. As you can see, it is that tall and it's been progressively cut. If you come closer, you can see where the cuts have been made. So this tree, it would have been cut over there. Then another major cut over here. Can you see that it's callousing there? So that's, and where it's been cut and when it calluses over, it makes quite a nice feature, almost like a hollow, what they call uro in Japanese. Then another cut made there, and then another cut made here and so on. We keep cutting, cutting to add taper. I would just point out a little trick that you need to note. If you let too many branches grow at one point, you will get what they call inverse taper. So there are a lot of branches here, but because there are a lot of branches here, it's made this portion swell. So this is a bad feature. So I really should cut all that off and make a better blend of the taper. So always remember, don't let too many branches grow from one single point because it creates this inverse taper effect. So although it's tempting to have a lot of ramification, if you have all the branches coming from one point, that is bad. And that doesn't help the taper. It spoils the taper. So if I can just move on to some of our maples again. This is a typical Japanese mountain maple, Asa palmatum. This was one of our six, eight feet tall trees that you see in the background. And we cut it there. And of course it died back, but we have a new shoot growing here. So wherever you see a new strong shoot, that can become the taper. So although you have a shoot growing here and a shoot growing there, I am inclined to make that the new leader. So I will not use that. With the saw, I'm going to cut it there. And that's going to be my new leader. This I should cut off because this may create inverse taper and that will take over as the new leader. And that's how I create the taper. So it's a constant cutting process. So although this tree was about eight feet tall, I may have done some air layering, but the rest of the tree is wasted if you just cut it and throw it away. But if you want taper, you've got to sacrifice all the top. So many of these trees are waiting to be made with taper. I will show you another example of a tree which is still growing in the ground. This is one of our large Zelkova, Japanese grey bark elms that I felled about 10 years ago because it was too big. And all these suckers have come up or their shoots have come up from there. And because there are so many branches there, it's helped to thicken it there. So I'm going to air layer the tree here. So this is going to be a broad base. 
So these are sacrificial, but I will eventually cut this off. Otherwise, it will create the inverse taper. You can see the inverse taper happening already there. So I'll cut all those branches off, all those branches off. So I got a nice curly tree and I will probably end up with a tree like this if I airway that. So that's how we create taper. And you can see the taper principle. If you apply it, you can just see how the taper is gradually created by pulling it up. This is a field maple that I have created many, many years ago. So it was a large tree about, I would say, 12 feet tall. And if we come closer, you can see where the cuts have been made. A major branch was cut from there. So the broad base became slightly thinner. Another thick branch cut from there. And then the next major cut was made there. If we go around the back, you can see where the cut was made. And it's callousing over nicely. I seldom uh, put paste on it because I like it to callous over naturally. But this is going to be the front. So when you look at it from the front, you won't see where the cuts are made. So although the cut is made here, you can see that cut at back is not visible. Then another cut was made here, about two inches above that. Then the next cut was made there. And this is how I kept adding and adding to the taper. But if it gets too tall and you don't want the tree to become too tall, you can probably cut it down and start all over again. In fact, if I wanted the tree to be short, I could even cut it off there or early that portion and get a short tree over here. So that's also possible. So there's infinite possibilities to creating it. And again, to reinforce what I've been telling you, let's look at this ash tree. This is all the English ash. Let's pull this fine out of the way. And look at that big ash there, if you can come and look at it. It's a major, major tree with a massive trunk. And the cut was made, there's a big cut at the back. If we come to the back, you can see where the cut was made. That's where the cut was made. And then the next major cut was up here. And then there was a cut here, which you don't see now. Another cut made there. You can see the scar there. And then the tree was kept at this height. So by constant cutting, we create the taper. So I hope I haven't bored you by telling you so much about the tapering process, but this is how it is done. Constant chopping to pull a new branch up. And this is how we create the taper. Here we have an instance where I have been making the taper over quite a few years. This is a Benichidori maple and it's got a nice curvy trunk. And what I did was to cut the branch over here. So I shortened the tree and where I cut, I had three shoots coming out. One, two, three. And this is the start of the taper for the rest of the tree. If I take it out of the pot and show you how I now decide where to go on. Let's pull it out, it's quite hot ball. There we go. So it's got quite nice base there. Nice roots and two branches. I can use them if I wish. And the decision now is which of these three do I use for the taper because they all have a role to play if I look at it this side I can even use this one as the new leader because you've got the two branches there so I can use this one or if I use this side I can use this as the taper it's coming out very nicely or I can even use this as the taper this, in fact, is too much here because if you have too many branches, it makes the inverse taper, it makes the swelling. So I'm going to get rid of that. So let's set about doing it. So straight away, I'm going to take that off. You take all the trouble to grow it and you cut it all off. But as I said in bonsai, it's all about cutting. Now the big decision is what do I do whether I use this as the front or use this as the front. I don't like using this as the front because this looks ugly and the leader is really receding. If I use this as the front, 
the leader is leaning towards me, which is much better. So if I use this as the front, then I don't need this one. So let's get rid of this. If I was stingy, I could air this and get another beautiful Benichidori, but I don't have all the time in the world to wait. So I've waited long enough creating a taper. So I've done that. So now what do I do? I, am I going to use this, which is a much smoother taper, or do I use that little one which is going more upright? Very difficult decision. Very difficult decision for me. If I remove this one, i.e. that one going back up, and because it's thinner, the transition may be too, too abrupt. Whereas this is a more gradual and smooth taper. So, reluctantly, I've got to bite the bullet and I'm going to take that off. You have to take a decision. And then I will draw this on and while it goes, it'll thicken it and then I will cut it again over there. Maybe I don't need all that. Let's cut that, let it grow again. So that's going to make the taper. And then hopefully I will cut it again there and then we will get the nice rod. But meanwhile, I should deal with these. I will show you what I do. I don't want these lumpy bits to hang around. So with the hybrid cutter or a branch cutter, I can take away all that. And then I will seal it because I don't want the wood to rot. I just want to seal it so that it calluses over nicely. So you get the smooth taper. It's like cosmetic surgery, really. So these I can pull down like that and then go the taper. So that's how I've created the taper on that tree. Now let's look at another more difficult tree. These are maples. Deciduous trees always have the opportunity for making taper. Now this maple has also been growing in a pot and you can see what I did originally. Looking at the back, the tree was about four feet tall and I cut it down to about four or six inches just for the hell of it so that I get a better proportion. And this is where I've been cutting. I didn't seal it so it's just healed over. And I've got this new shoot going up this way. So where I cut it, you don't see it. So that's going to bl blend nicely. But this I don't need now. So let's get rid of this. I can do this and then probably this is too tall. Ideally, I want the new shoot to grow there and the taper to keep going this way. But I will just keep keep it for the heck of it so that it pulls the sap up. This also may cause inverse taper. So I will get rid of this. So you can see it's such a tedious process. You keep cutting and chopping just to create taper and then bother about the branches later on. So it is a long process. So to get perfection, it is a long process. If you wire evergreen trees like pines and junipers, you get an almost instant effect but with deciduous trees this is the result and in fact this may cause it to swell so i'm going to cut that off so if i was doing a demonstration at a public show how to make a bonsai this is all i produce i have nothing to show for it so how ridiculous is that and that's why you know doing a demonstration on deciduous trees is a mugs game. It is very difficult to show anything useful. But this is how I produce the taper. And then eventually the tree is going to be a small tree. I may carve this root to get a better nebari or root base, but let the tree develop and let's see what happens. But the main thing is to give this gradual taper than just a severe chop at the top. So I hope this has taught you something about taper and you will see the other examples that are on this video, all about creating taper. So I hope I've satisfied those people who have asked about making taper.